Hello everyone and welcome to the Agenda Woman YouTube channel. It is 2023. So I've been off social media for about a week or two. I think my last post was on the 23rd of December and I am energized, well rested, ready to take on the year. I'm so excited about 2023. I don't know. I just am an eternal optimist but I just feel good about this year. I have my other reasons which are well researched and quite personal around why I feel that 2023 is going to be an amazing year but I am really really filled with so much positive sentiments about this year and I'm excited to get going and uh, taking on the challenges that it throws and reveling on the blessings that it offers us as well. So before I get into anything, I just want to say thank you so much to every single person that has subscribed, to everyone that has watched the podcast that we launched last year. The feedback has been incredible. It actually makes me feel so silly for taking so long to start a podcast, but I guess everything in perfect timing and I really believe that was the time, I guess, for us or for me to start podcasting and I had an awesome time. It was very expensive, but I decided to take the leap of faith and invest in really creating that content for you. And after I saw how much this content was well received, needed, necessary, I decided to invest further and buy equipment that would help me be able to create content without a team and just, you know, have a setup that I can basically plug and play. There's a lot that I still need to learn around um, how to use my camera, how to use my lighting, where to sit, how to be audible. There's just a lot, but I'm really excited to share more content. Speaking about sharing more content, I need your help. I get a lot of questions that are mental specific questions on Instagram and I want to use this channel to be able to respond to some of the questions that I receive. Of course, we'll create some kind of pipeline around receiving the questions, responding to the questions, but I really don't know what to call the segment on our channel. So I need your creative minds in deciding what to call the segment. I'm also not sure if I should be recording these on a daily basis or whether I should have them on a weekly basis. Either way, more than anything, I wanna get into the rhythm of uh, really recording a lot of uh, video content for you. But more than that, finding a way to connect you to the resources that will help you with some of your challenges, whether in business, which is the working smart piece of uh, the work that we do on the channel, or whether that is the living well piece um, that we do on the channel. Anyway, I'm really excited for 2023. I need your help to figure out what to call this segment, how often I should be sharing the content, and uh, what kind of content, what kind of questions you guys have that you need answers to. Some of the times the answers won't come from me. I'm going to be calling on my network when I am unable to give you the answers. And when I am able to give you the answers, I will be recording the video myself. So this video, I don't want it to be more than 20 minutes. It really is a part one of four around intention setting and particularly elements of vision boarding. And of course, Everyone is thinking, so cliche to have a video like this at the beginning of the year, or at least let me say, some people feel like that, you know, over the years we've seen a lot of people talking about not having resolutions, not planning for the year, and not really getting into responding to that actually natural inclination to think through what you want the year to look like for you. So there's actually scientific evidence research that was done around this feeling that we all have at the beginning of the year where we want to set goals and change our lives, go back to gym, eat better, all of these things that we start really thinking we need to be paying more attention to. And the scientific name for it, or the research really calls it the fresh start effect. Essentially, what happens with special occasions or what the research or the paper calls temporal landmarks is this pull towards really reflecting 
and thinking about your life in a big picture way and that feeling then leading people to want to set goals and have a better view of what they could do in order to create their ideal lives. So if you're feeling like this, particularly around the beginning of the year, for me, it really is something I think about every Sunday, you know, at the beginning of the week, I think about what my week was going to look like, what I did last week and how that can help me be productive or achieve my goals in the following week. For other people, it's birthdays where they think about their big research, so it's not necessarily the beginning of the year. For other people, it's changing jobs. For other people, it's getting married. Other people, it's getting divorced. All of these big occasions and shifts, or what we call temporal landmarks, like I've already explained, give us this deep need to think about our lives in a different way. Psychologists actually say that it is a great opportunity for us to redefine and think about meaningful ways to live. So I'm just here for the next four videos to help you with the tools that I use when I get that inclination to reflect and to think about the future. That's really what I want to do with this video. And I think another thing that's really been in my heart is I want to just encourage you to keep trying no matter how many times you fall off. When I think about the last seven years of my life, some of the things I was able to achieve in 2022, I started thinking about in 2016. That was actually the first year that I had a vision board. That vision board was not necessarily for the year. It was my life vision. It was everything I want my life to look like. It was where I want to have houses, what I want those houses to look like where I find meaning. And it's so funny because one of the things that I wrote in that vision board was that I want to be effective in empowering the girl child. And I want to be very honest in saying my thoughts were around the girl child. I had no idea that I would go on to start a gender woman in 2018 and to register it as a business in 2020 and to walk into 2023 being so clear about the products that we're selling at Agenda Woman, about the, the key pillars that we focus on, about Agenda Woman being about working smart and living well, about, you know, key revenue drivers, how we're going to get to achieve our targets financially, and how Agenda Woman has been a combination of the things I am able to do, the things that I, I love, the things that I've been trained on, and how all of this actually started with that intention I set in 2016 for my life. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to share with you what I've done in the last three days in preparing for the actual act of vision boarding, which I will take you through in the next video. But this video is really about the preparation that you need to get into when you start thinking about vision boarding. It can be actually overwhelming. You know, what do you think about? What do you not think about? How do you categorize vision boarding? What elements do you include? What elements do you live out? This video is going to help you with a tool that has really been effective for me in thinking through vision boarding. So a couple of years ago, I came across a life design system. In actual fact, that's what it is. A life design system called the Life Book. It was developed by a guy called John Butcher and his wife. You can find um, the whole story if you just Google Life Book and you add John Butcher next to um, you know, your, your Google tab. And essentially it looks at 12 life areas that if you put your energy towards thinking through what you want those life areas to look like, you can start to design the life of your dreams. So in the next five, 10 minutes, I really don't want this video to be long. I'm going to take you through those life areas. What I have done for myself is I took time to reflect on all 12. I didn't do it all at once. It took me three days and I really set with each one of them what the life book also encourages you to do is to have a rating system for yourself. So you look at 2022, particular life area, and then you rate yourself, you know, how do you feel you've improved? And I think what that does is it doesn't create this anxiety and this urgency around making each life area perfect, but it just creates 
an opportunity, a space where you can look at these life areas and say, you know what, in this space I've grown. I had a conversation with my friend actually on the phone about the importance of setting time to actually do this. There's so many things that happen in the day and you will think about, oh, my finances I think have improved or actually I did that and I'm proud of it. But what I saw happening for me when I set the time to actually think through each of these life areas, write down uh, on my journal what has happened, um, give myself a rating, which was really just for fun for me, has helped me recognize how powerful 2022 has been for me. So without wasting more time, I'm going to just get into the 12 life areas. I will also list them below in the caption. And I also want to hear from you, you know, what ratings you gave those life areas. I think another important thing to mention is that at any given point, on any given year, you're not going to focus on all 12. Often I create a top five for myself, areas that I want to focus on going into the year. But when I do do my reflections, I look through all the 12 life areas. So don't get overwhelmed. You don't have to think about all of them every year, every moment, every week. You can just focus on the ones that you believe are a priority for you to give attention to. And when we do the vision boarding, you will then just think through things that you want to achieve in those life areas versus all 12. So the first life area that you want to think through is your health and fitness. I think for me, it is the most important. I don't think anything else makes sense if you're not health and fit, healthy and fit. If you're not healthy, what is going on? I think health and fitness is so important. I have seen it over the years that when I feel good, when I'm energized, I am much more able to show up in the other life areas in a great way. So health and fitness, you think through your exercise regime, you think through your water intake, you think through your meal plan, you think through really all the things that help you optimize your health and fitness. I don't want to spend too much time on each of the life areas because there's so many. I think as we navigate this conversation, as I build towards the other videos, you guys will let me know which ones you want me to spend more time elaborating on. But for me personally, health and fitness, I think I'll probably give myself a six out of 10. I really made more effort this year to eat well and to exercise. I fell off a couple of times and every time I fell off, I would start again. And I'm really proud that I actually made the attempt to make this a priority and to actually get to the gym and have long streaks of you know back-to-back -back days at the gym like three months or stuff like that it's something that I recognize that I want to do better over the years so I'm very patient with myself in finding my own rhythm the second life area is your intellectual life and this really speaks to your intention around you know uh, stimulating yourself intellectually for me as an entrepreneur, I don't have the option but to consistently learn and to grow in, in, in aspects or, or areas that will help me be a better businesswoman. So reading books around business has been something that I have been doing for a very long time and not just reading the books, but taking notes and implementing some of those things in my business. So essentially it's something that comes very easily for me. And I'm also a person that is stimulated by intellectual conversations, being surrounded by intellectual people. So intellectual life, I think I'd give myself a good, 8 out of 10 and 8 out of 10 because one of the things that I want to do when it comes to this particular life area is to go back to school and attain degrees in particular subjects and I think the reason I haven't done it is because I've been thinking about which subjects really to do. I'm interested in so many things and I also think about which ones are going to help me be um, particularly a better business woman because that's the area where I pay a lot of attention when I think just about living a better life and you know, being a professional business person. Third life area is your emotional life. Um, and this speaks to how you feel just by yourself, thinking through your emotions. Are you consuming content that makes you feel good emotionally? Are you around people that make you feel good emotionally? Are you regulating your emotions? I think it also touches a bit into the state of your mental health. Are you really doing the things that are helping you be better regulated emotionally and mentally? And I have to say for me, I have a strong boundary when it comes to my emotional life. 
I do not compromise when it comes to people who don't make me feel good. Areas that don't make me feel good. Activity that doesn't make me feel good. I think it almost is the immediate red flag around paying attention to everything else. My emotional life because I'm extremely emotional in just how I engage with the world. Uh, that is really the area that where the signal goes off first if my life is not in harmony. So emotional life, I would say 9 out of 10 really because it has come, it has become really intrinsic to how I navigate the world. You know, how I feel, um, how I show up, my ability to even wake up in the morning. I've had really tough years where I, I, I want to believe that maybe I might have had mild symptoms of depression. I don't want to diagnose myself. So I think because of those years, I'm super alert when it comes to my emotional life and paying attention to how my day-to-day -day activity makes me feel and my day-to-day -day engagement. So yeah, nine out of 10 for my emotional life. The next life area that you would need to think about is your character. I've lost count, but I'm, I will list everything below. And when it comes to character, it's something that we don't often become intentional about looking into it because we think our character is just who we are on any given day. But I think there needs to be intentionality around focusing on our character. And for me, Focusing on my character looks like better even understanding my strengths and weaknesses so that I know how to navigate my day to day, what kind of people I need to hire, you know, what kind of energy I need to gravitate towards, what kind of personalities make me better, you know, in the things that I do on a daily basis, whether that is me being a mom and thinking through, you know, the people that help me as a parent, me being a businesswoman and thinking through the people that I need to have around me. And often, you know, I drop the ball and I don't think through these things before I make big decisions. But one of the things I did in my reflections was going back to a uh, personality test that I did, which is called Strengths Finder which really helped me better understand what my strengths are. It actually gives you 20 strengths. The first five would be where you are really awesome and where you thrive. The next five would be areas where you can dabble, but not necessarily areas where you're strong. And the last five out of the 20 is really uh, areas that are no go for you that you don't even need to really think about investing your energy in and just thinking about as associating with people who are strong in those areas so that you can live a life that is optimized. So I'm going to share a link to that strength finder as well so that you can do it for yourself and better understand really where you're strong, where you can pay attention, where you can maybe give more attention, you know, in terms of character traits that help you navigate life well. And also I think it's important what you don't need to pay attention to so that you don't spend so much of your time trying to get better at things that are not essentially your strengths. The next life area is spirituality. It's my favorite because I think I'm very, very strong in this life area. When I was journaling about this particular life area, I felt so much gratitude for how I have grown in my spirituality. I grew up in a Christian home. I was always, you know, raised around uh, spiritual conversations. But I think 2022 was the year that brought me back to my spirituality in a big way. And I think over the years I have been spiritual, but I haven't been as anchored as I became in 2022. I think sometimes when you're going through tough times, yes, we lean on our spirituality, but also we become separated from our spirituality because we want to be self-sufficient. We want to figure out how to make our lives better. Sometimes we are stuck in a space of self-pity. So we forget that we can actually lean on our spirituality, lean on our faith to really be reminded that things will turn out better. So sometimes when we are down, we forget that we can lean on spirituality. Sometimes when we're doing really well, we forget that we can lean on spirituality. And I think if you're a person who's doing really well, one of the ways that you can lean on, on your spirituality is through gratitude practices. It has been transformational for me in also me taking account of how much is going well in my life. I think when we navigate life and often are tuned into the difficulties that life presents to us, we miss the amount of things that are going well. I've been looking at, you know, some of the stuff that people have been posting on social media around 2022 saying it can end now. It's been a horrible year. And yes, I, I, I recognize that for some people it's been a tough year, but I, I also 
was very intentional about not getting absorbed in that energy and just wanting to be part of that narrative because that's maybe what a lot of people are saying and owning the fact that 2022 was an exceptional year for me. There was a lot of growth. In, in many of these life areas, there was absolutely a lot of growth. I saw God come through for me in a way that I understand was inevitable when you lean on God and I definitely also 9 out of 10 because I'm not perfect when it comes to this specific life area for me I I am living in God's dream for me my being is 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 in the divine I don't think I'd be able to do the work that I do in the way that I do it and be able to connect with people in the way that I connect with people if I wasn't fundamentally rooted in, you know, my relationship with God and also my ability to recognize that I don't think there's something exceptionally special about me except that I recognize what I'm here to do and I am very fortunate to live in a space where I get to do that. So 9 out of 10 on uh, that particular life area, which is spirituality, and I'm so grateful that I can sit here in 2023 and say that. The next life area you need to focus on is parenting. I'm a mom of two, a 17-year-old uh, girl and a 14-year-old boy. Both of them are growing a year older in January and February, wild. My son is turning 15 in January, my daughter is turning 18 in February. And I have to say, I am so blessed to have kids that are very emotionally intelligent there's a lot of conversations that take place in my home uh, there's a lot of parenting as well because i think yes there should be space for children to be able to articulate you know what their feelings are but i don't think that, that should eliminate the need for parents to parent so i can definitely say on the parenting front and of course, I think they should be giving me a rating on the parenting front. So I'm not going to give myself a rating there. I'm actually going to ask them what rating they would give me uh, from the parenting front. And then I'll update you guys on the next video. But really proud of who they are as individuals. And I'm not just saying this as a mom. I think one of my gauges when it comes to, you know, how they are is often asking myself if I'd be friends with them, you know. And it's a weird gauge, but... I, it allows me to see them as human beings and not just my children. And I think if I had to pick them as friends, I would definitely pick them as friends. They, they give so much to me in terms of helping me understand myself better. Also sometimes pointing out my faults and areas where I can be strong. And I really love that relationship because it also gives them autonomy around defining what kind of, you know, character, you know, they, they want to be and how they want to show up in the world. So I won't rate myself on the parenting life area. I will leave that to them. The next life area which I suck at is social life. I'm not going to be hard on myself, but really my social life is so interlinked with my work because that's where I do a lot of events, that's where I meet a lot of women, that's where I engage with a lot of people around, you know, what is happening in their lives, me learning from them. So social life, I think I need to pay a lot of attention to going into 2023, even when I was reflecting on it, I was just like, I'm so pathetic in this area. I love fine dining, but I also love dining with people who stimulate me mentally. I'm one of those people who wants to have like a dinner in a beautiful place with wine tasting and you know different dishes you know six course menus i think that's one of the reasons i absolutely enjoy being in cape town because i get to experiment with like food and um wine and pairings and you know different experiences i think i'm a bit of a foodie but i don't think i've confirmed that with myself but absolutely i want to do more of um, social activity that I love and also discover other activities that I may have not discovered before. Traveling is really big for me when it comes to, you know, my social life. And I think even when I travel, I want to experience different foods, uh, different spaces that are beautiful. I'm definitely a snob. I'm not one of those people who travels and, you know, I go into the depth of uh, cultures of the areas that I travel to. More than anything, 
I love, you know, the architecture, the beautiful architecture, the buildings, the restaurants, the food in those restaurants and uh, some stories, you know. Um, but I'm not a market girl. I see a lot of people when they travel, particularly through the continent, they go to markets, but that's not me. I really just love uh, figuring out the the restaurant scene. I don't even want to call it the food scene, the hospitality scene and immersing myself in the beauty of, you know, the different narratives that can be pulled through architecture and, and food. I'm left with four life areas and the next one is financial life, another big win for me. I've invested a lot of work in getting in a better space financially and this is not the influx of money into my life but the better management of that influx and I think a lot of times people become very shy and reserved around talking about money and of course different cultures have different philosophies around engaging in conversations about money but I found that particularly in building a gender woman a lot of people really struggle not only with getting money but really managing money and I think it's an area that I've grown in leaps and bounds. And there's so many different tiers to this conversation because I can tell you about, you know, how setting up a salary structure has helped me, how budgeting has fundamentally shifted everything for me. And it's such a basic tool, but I haven't been using it optimally. And in 2022, it's one of the ways that I have been able to really manage my money well. I have shares in different companies now. I just have a confidence around my money that I didn't have in the past because I really didn't feel like I was in a place where my money was working for me. More than anything, I was working for my money all the time but finally i'm in a place where my money is working for me i have a better understanding of how to manage not only my personal cash but the business cash as well and i'm really excited to see what that does for the business going into 2023 even planning is much more easier because i understand where we'll be able to get revenue you know it's basic things like how i never believed in getting funding for my business because I had this mentality that I need to work hard and I need to have my business make money for itself. But I just have a fundamentally very different relationship with money and I understand it to be a tool that will allow me to do my work well, particularly when it comes to business. And in my personal life, it's a tool that allows me extreme convenience and convenience is so important for me. So definitely nine and a half out of 10. I'm gonna be very brave and put it at nine and a half out of 10. So proud of myself for everything I've been able to achieve when it comes to my financial life. The third last area is your career life. Again, I think fixing my financial life and getting it into a nine and a half has fundamentally impacted my career life. And my career life, of course, for me as a businesswoman is really my ability to continue to build a sustainable growing business. And I think really getting the financial aspect right freed me up to really think about the possibilities when it comes to how far we can go as a business. On a different video, I'm going to explain my business structure. And you guys let me know if there's something that you, you want me to, to get into. We're a platform and content business. We have elements of marketing as well. We have elements of building ecosystems. It's something that we're going to be communicating a lot more effectively in 2023. How do you build an ecosystem that allows you to monetize your consumer in a way that is purpose-driven? I think this actually might be the first time that I explain it in a way that it lives in me but anyway that's going to be something that we'll be communicating more effectively in 2023 on social media you'll be seeing also a diversification of the business structures the projects and the properties that we're going to be developing in the business as well so definitely getting the financial aspects right freed me up to get the career life area in a better position than it was and another thing, I think there isn't fundamentally a lot of new things when it comes to career, but I think I've just grown in confidence and better understanding what I do exceptionally well and why I've been able to really sustain me, build, grow, and develop the businesses that I've had. The second last life area is quality of life. And this one doesn't fundamentally look at one aspect. 
when I got to this part when I was journaling, I just looked at all the different areas. I looked at all the different ratings and I used that to average my quality of life. Because if I get the 10 life areas at a good eight, I think I have a good quality of life. If my finances are right, my career is right, my health is right, uh, my parenting is in a good space, my social life is in a healthy place, that's when you kind of look at this particular area and you say, what's the average, you know? And that starts to determine your overall quality of life. So for me, quality of life right now is sitting at probably an eight. You know, anyone who meets me and they ask me how I am, I am very quick to say that I'm awesome. I wake up every day excited about what I can do, uh, what I can achieve, who I can become. Uh, my life is limitless. You know, when I think about anything, I fundamentally know that I have the ability to bring it to life and to really incorporate it into my life vision. Speaking on life vision, it is actually the top life area. And life vision really speaks to, I think that vision board I did in 2016 that did speak about what my ultimate life vision looks like. And this is something that we don't spend a lot of time thinking about. And I think it is the question that probed this activity for me. I was thinking a lot about what does my best life look like? Have you ever asked yourself that? What does my best life look like? And spend time thinking through what, if I had to paint a picture and there were no limitations, what would my ideal life look like? And I think there are certain things that that question pointed to that I needed to investigate and start to change. And Maybe I'll speak about that also in a different video. You guys remind me in the comments so that I can write notes about all the things that I, I say I'm going to create videos about. But I then thought about a photo gallery that I have uh, on my phone that is called Abundance. That's what I actually called it. And I had all these different images of um, things that I would have if I had an abundant life. And an abundant life for me is material, it is emotional, it is every different aspect of my life or all the life areas and thinking through what that would look like if there were no limits. And it really evoked a, an excitement to pursuing those things without guilt, without excuses, with a deep understanding that that's what I crave. That's what looks like a beautiful life for me. Saying this, I actually realized that there is a life area that I skipped and I don't know why I forgot about it, but that life area is your love relationships. And maybe I skipped it because I am a very private person when it comes to, you know, my romantic life. But uh, I would give that an eight out of 10. I've been extremely blessed to, you know, find myself here and to also, you know, find myself at a place where my romantic life looks the way that it looks. I'm not going to spend too much time speaking in code because I'm not saying anything. But 8 out of 10 in love relationship. And I want to encourage you to also investigate for you um, whether you are in a relationship or not. You know, what does that look like? Because love relationship is not only about being in a relationship with someone it is also about your relationship with yourself so if you are not in a relationship it is an important life area to also investigate yeah definitely eight out of ten for myself there's still areas that i need to pay attention to in this particular space but uh, i'm grateful to be at an eight i think having a person in your life that helps you to become a better person, a better version of yourself, that encourages you to dream big, that encourages you know your efforts, that makes you feel like it's okay to be you. Does so much for you know all the different life areas in terms of your confidence in pursuing them. And uh, this is of course not the truth for everyone, but it is the truth for me. Really the energy that is around me, whether that is a romantic partner, friends, um, you know, people I engage with on a daily basis, mentors, advisors is so crucial to how 
I step into the world, my relationship with God. So that energy is very important for me to constantly pay attention to. And that's the end of the video. These are the life areas I want to encourage you to take a look at before the second video, which I don't know when it's going to be uh, launching because I'm going to wait for you guys to tell me when, what you think the frequency of these videos should be. I think weekly might make sense. Tell me which day maybe um, is a day that you want to engage with this content on. And I, for me, the day is normally a Sunday where I have downtime and I can sit and actually listen to content, write notes, actually act on the, act, the content that I am consuming. But it's different for everyone. I know that some people also get access to unlimited data when they're at work. So they normally look through this content or download it when they're at work. I just want you guys to give me ideas around what you think we should be doing with this content and where we should have it, how we should have the content in terms of formats. Do you want to see some pieces of this content on Instagram, on LinkedIn? I'm really excited about LinkedIn for 2023 as well. We're going to be doing a lot there, also on my personal LinkedIn page. Um, and when I speak about Instagram, I am speaking about my personal page at Nomdeni. I'm also speaking about the Agenda Woman page as well at Agenda Woman. Yeah, I just want ideas around how you guys want to consume the content, the frequency, the format as well, how long it should be. I don't want to create long videos. I can speak for a very long time, but I don't want to create long videos. So thank you so much for listening to this video up until the end. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can get notifications when we do post videos. Comment below, the comments always help us really better understand how we can help you work smart and live well. This is an extension of that narrative, but I feel like I need to give this specific segment a different name. I don't know, you let me know. It could be working smart and living well something, or it could be a completely different iteration of, you know, the working smart and living well narrative. Whew. Finally, at the end of the video, thank you once again for staying with me. Please let me know what other content you want me to create, questions that you have.